Hello everyone, DMFF here, and today we're doing something a little bit different for this video. Today, we are going to be doing my top 10 favorite games of the decade from 2010 to 2019. This is a little bit different of a video from what I normally do. And face reveal! Well, anyway guys, I really hope you enjoy this video. Uh, remember, this is my opinion. This is purely my list. So, I hope you enjoy it and take it with a pinch of salt. Happy New Year. Be safe out there, guys. Number 10. League of Legends. Now, I know what you're thinking right away. Oh my god, this guy has League of Legends on his top 10 games for the decade? What's wrong with this guy? Well, it is on my top 10 and at number 10 for a few reasons. Uh, I played this game for about two-thirds of the decade, honestly, and uh, played ranked and really enjoyed the game. Uh, it's, you know, your typical um, multiplayer online battle arena where you click to move and have abilities and try to overtake your opposite team's base. Five versus five, or three versus three most of the time. You're playing with other people, and really, other people can be toxic by choosing not to work with you, and I'm not a huge fan of Riot Games to begin with. Uh, no offense to anybody who does like League of Legends, uh, but I really like the mechanics of the game. I like being able to uh, combo people into oblivion, but uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever pick up the game competitively again, mainly just because not a fan of Riot, not a fan of playing with trolls. So, yeah, that is what it is. If you want, I have some video game music videos from back in the day, if you want to check them out. A lot of them are of League of Legends videos. Go ahead, check them out. Number 9. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Now, this decade has had a lot of Ultimate editions of things, but Super Smash Bros. Ultimate takes all of the things from Super Smash Bros. previously that you have enjoyed and pretty much combined them into one game. Uh, other than wave dashing, which nobody really liked anyway. But the roster is huge, the gameplay is fun, the first single player mode is really fun as well, unlocking characters is always fun, making it easier to unlock the characters, and the gameplay is absolutely the best it's ever been. And you know, as a long-standing Super Smash Bros. fan, I highly enjoy this game. It's great to play with a bunch of different friends. It reminds me of the good old days of sitting on the couch and being able to play this game with your friends while having snacks and staying up until 4 in the morning. Uh, and also, you can play it online. So you get that itch as well. Great game. This is my number 9 game of the decade. Number eight, Cuphead. Ah, Cuphead. This gloriously beautiful game. Oh my gosh, look at that artwork. Look at those bosses. Look at those Cup Boys. Oh, and it just so happens to be like, a lot like Contra. So this game is super fun and a little bit difficult for uh, those not used to the uh, shmup genre. Shoot em up. And, uh, but it is very cool with very unique abilities and guns and all sorts of different things. It's tough and even has a harder mode. And it's absolutely beautiful. Just look at these animations. Smooth AF. This is my number eight game for the decade. Number seven, Resident Evil 7. Now I know what you're thinking. This tool is pairing up number 7 with Resident Evil 7. And uh, it was not intended, but here we are anyway. Anyway, this game breathes some much needed life back into the series. Though they do take a big risk going to first person, which I think works beautifully. You really feel like you're claustrophobic and, and really tight in spaces. Plus, you actually feel like you need to utilize all of your resources properly, as they are finite. The graphics are gross, 
and all of the things really look disgusting, and some of the boss battles in this game really are gross, and uh, I highly recommend you give it a play, because it is one of the best games of this decade, and uh, it also got me back into speedrunning a little bit. I attempted to speedrun this game a little bit, and was never able to get a time that I was really happy with, but I highly recommend you give this game a play. This is my number seven pick. Number six, Undertale. Now I can hear a bunch of people groaning in the background, oh my god, he likes Undertale. Yes, while it is kind of been taken over by the internet and uh, destroyed into blasphemy, the game is really great. Though it does scrutinize you for taking the murderous path but, if you were to play this game as a pacifist, you would see the best endings, and it's a really touching story that brings people together and is really lovely, honestly, with a wonderful mixture of RPG elements and bullet hell. It makes for a really fun game, and you can play through it multiple times, as one playthrough is about three to five hours, depending on how slow you go. You could even go faster than that if you really wanted to. While this game sports some really simplistic graphics, I really love them, and plus, listen to these musical scores! This witty charm and absolute atmosphere that Toby Fox gives to this game really makes it a wonderful game, and I spent so much time trying to find everything in this game. I loved it, Toby Fox. So I have high hopes for what your next games will be. And this was my number six game. Number five, Minecraft. Ah, Minecraft. Such a wonderful game. Coming out at the beginning of the decade in 2011, this massive game took off like a rocket ship and has become one of the most popular games played today. There's just something so relaxing about being able to build your own world in creative mode and just build whatever you want and have your creativity come to life. Or even play in hardcore survival with your friends and see if you can take on some of the challenges that the whole game has to offer. This game is absolutely crazy in depth. You have so many different recipes, so many different things you can build. You can program in the game with all of the things available to you. It's like a world within a world. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. It's a masterpiece, and it deserves to be called one of the best games of 2010 to 2019 of this decade. Number five. Number four. Super Mario Maker 1 and Super Mario Maker 2. Now, I know this is a bit of a cop-out, lumping the two together, but they're such similar games that they just feel like updates from each other. But anyway, do you love Mario? I love Mario. Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, 3, and World were all of the first games that I played. I had them all as a child and I loved them very much, but I always wanted to make my own levels. Well, now you can with this game. And you can play everyone else's levels from all over the world. It's amazing. It is one of the greatest things to ever happen to Mario in my lifetime. 
sure I do love Super Mario Odyssey and Mario 64 and games like that, but Mario Maker 1 and 2 just really captured the magic that Mario is and gave it to all of us to be able to create whatever we want. There's garbage and there is masterpieces. I take them all and appreciate them all as these games are marvelous. This is my number four games. Number three, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Yes, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links this year. The game came out in late 2016 and uh, was met with great success. They are actually celebrating their 100 millionth download this year and uh, their third anniversary coming up shortly that we will all be celebrating. I love this game. Yu-Gi-Oh! Lite. It is basically the same thing as what old school Yu-Gi-Oh! used to be. Before Zexel and before Arc V and before Vrains. It was simple. We, had some, we have some synchro monsters now, but this gives me the feeling of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was younger, a teenager. It feels great. It feels great to play this game, and I'm happy to make content for it every week. This has impacted me very well, and I, I could put it at a higher spot, or a better spot, but other games have impacted me a little bit more, honestly. Though, I do love me some Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and will continue to play it. This is my number three game for the decade. Number two, Realm Royale. Jumping on that train of Battle Royale games, Realm Royale made a game that is based on fantasy, using abilities, magic, and weapons to fight people while forging at the same time. This type of game made me go nuts for it. I've tried out Fortnite, I've tried out PUBG, I've tried out Apex, but Realm Royale scratches an itch that the other games just don't have. It's a fantasy, cartoony, beautiful game that I would definitely say kind of gives me a feeling of a mixture of Halo and World of Warcraft combined into one. It's wonderful. Makes me wish one day that uh, Realm Royale could have something like an MMORPG with these same gameplay features. But I guess we'll see later on in life. I've streamed this game and played a lot of this game. Uh, I have actually declined in playing recently, mainly because of a setup issue. We just don't have the space to play it right now. But in the future, I will definitely be playing this game again. It is my favorite computer game of the past two years for sure. This is my number two, Realm Royale. Here are some honorable mentions that couldn't make the list for one reason or another. And uh, this may surprise you, but in the honorable mentions, is going to be Breath of the Wild, Witcher 3, God of War, GTA 5, and Marvel Heroes. So Breath of the Wild, Witcher 3, God of War, and GTA 5 are all games that I have not finished. So I can't accurately say whether or not they're going to be my favorites of the decade. Though I do recognize that they are masterpieces and deserve the shout out that they are getting here. Marvel Heroes, unfortunately, was a game that's very similar to Diablo that was shut down by Disney. It makes me very sad because I really loved this game. <laughs> it was my favorite game and were it still alive today, it probably would have taken the number one spot. But unfortunately, since it has met its demise, I will say rest in peace, Marvel Heroes, and thank you for all the wonderful times that you have given me. And finally, number one, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Early on in the decade, in 2011, we were given The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, a fantastic sandbox of an RPG that is absolutely beautiful. There is so much to do in this game, 
multiple side quests, along with a pretty driving storyline that is quite fun to listen to, and for the first time, is not a D&D dice roll based game. This game is fun. Though it is filled with bugs, most of the time they aren't game breaking, <coughs> sometimes they are, but this game is truly magnificent. Being able to play however you would like, as a good citizen, as a bad citizen, with full armor, or with swords, with magic, with a bow, you can do what as you please. You could do all of them if you have the time. It's very fun. And on top of that, you can mod this game to the teeth, making it more beautiful than some of the uh, latest titles. Or you can change the game altogether. This game has been re-released so many times because of its absolute grand nature. This game cannot be topped by an MMORPG. It's timeless. It's a game that you can go back to and revere. That you can go into and say, hey, I remember doing this with my friends. With your friends? Yeah, sometimes we would all sit together on the couch. And if we couldn't get by apart, we would pass it along. Pass the controller over, all while we're having a couple of drinks. <sighs> Those were some great times. And to me, it really happened at a time when uh, some of the foundations in my life and with my friends started to really happen. And it just is solidified for me that this game is truly magnificent and special. And we shouldn't take it for granted, even if it is a buggy mess sometimes. Well guys, that was my top 10 favorite games of the decade. Did I miss any of yours? Do you not agree with my list? Throw me a comment down below and we'll see what yours looks like. If you want to support me further, check me out over on Patreon. Link down in the description but down below. Alright guys, if you liked this video, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you disliked it, Go ahead and hit that dislike button. Well, either way, have a safe new year, guys. And I really hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. See you next time.